The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Bhattaka Swami on September 5th, 1984 in Gold Fort. The class begins with a reading from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 66. Krotibachalang Pangulangayate getting a three part of a hung bande, three gurung dinatarinam. Hodaman and Homad Hobam. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace purport unless one is in Krishna consciousness there is no possibility of peace so it is confirmed in the fifth chapter 529 that when one understands that Krishna is the only enjoyer of all the good results of sacrifice and penance, that he is the proprietor of all universal manifestations, and that he is the real friend of all living entities, then only can one have real peace. Therefore, if one is not in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be a final goal for the mind. Disturbance is due to want of an ultimate goal. And when one is certain that Krishna is the enjoyer, proprietor and friend of everyone and everything, then one can, with a steady mind, bring about peace. Therefore, one who is engaged without a relationship with Krishna is certainly always in distress and is without peace. However much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness is a self-manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with Krishna. Thus end the text 66, chapter 2 of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, in the matter of the contents of the Gita summarized. So here, Krishna has first summarized, if somebody is satisfied in Krishna consciousness, that all of the threefold miseries of material existence cease to exist. On the other hand, someone else who is not connected with the Supreme, even if they try to achieve some kind of spiritual consciousness, that it's not possible for them to have a steady mind. To have a steady mind, one requires transcendental intelligence. That's not possible without Krishna consciousness. So therefore, everything is in a very turbulent state, wherein it's not possible to have any peace. Kamala dhalla jhalla jivana dhalla malla Description is given just as a drop of water is floating on top of a lotus leaf. If you've ever seen a picture of a drop of water on top of a lotus leaf 
floating on the water. It just spins around the top, always moving. It's very unsteady. It's much more aesthetic and smooth. But in its own way, it's like if you have a very hot pan and you throw a drop of water and it... That's very violent. The lotus leaf is, of course, much more smooth and uh, passive in its own way. But that drop of water just spins on the top. It has no fixed place. Like that, unless the mind is anchored to the lotus feet of Krishna, unless it's fixed on Krishna's lotus feet, in Krishna consciousness, then the mind will always be susceptible to be swept away by any one of the six senses, including the mind. So as a result, the mind cannot be steady. Therefore, one cannot be peaceful. Verses it also explains this it's like a boat which is on the ocean and it's being swept away by the wind. If a boat loses its rudder, steering mechanism in the back, then the whole boat it just gets blown away. So if our intelligence is not fixed in Krishna consciousness, then even if we try to remain in some aloof position, in a so-called transcendental position, the senses, the mind will always tend to rest somewhere. Just like a bird that can't fly forever, it's going to settle on some tree. So if we don't take shelter of Krishna's lotus uh, feet, the mind is going to take shelter of one of the senses. And then the senses will be agitating the mind, will be drawing the mind away in this way. One again gets drawn into material consciousness. <clears throat> Just like Vishwamitra, he was a born a Kshatriya. But he wanted to become a Brahmana. At first, uh, the society wouldn't accept him, but he was a Kshatriya. How could he become a Brahman? <clears throat> but the Guru said it's possible, and following their advice, he did some tapasya. And he was finally recognized as a Brahmana. But Vishishta Rishi, didn't accept him as an equal. He was proud that he was a Brahmana. But Vishishta was himself much greater than an ordinary Brahmana. He was a Brahmarishi. Apparently, in the level of Brahmanhood, there's different stages of potency. From a Brahmana to a Rishi, to a Maharishi, finally a Brahmarishi, who can go up to the planet of Lord Brahma even. So, this is a very long story. There's off and on some competition between Vishishta and Vishwamitra. Where Vishwamitra is trying to gain recognition, trying to advance. One point, uh, he, of course, had such a uh, scene with the demigods. One, uh, he would do tapasya and he'd gain his strength and he'd become so powerful. So one time there was a sudra and he prayed that he wanted to go to Swarga. He wanted to go to the heavenly planets. His name was Harishchandra. It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. 
So then Vishishta Vishamitra, he sent him by his mystic power up to Swargaloka. But Indra said, this person is not qualified. He hasn't gone through the necessary pious activities. He doesn't have that type of karma. He should come here. He sent him back. And then Vishwamitra had kept him up. So he was halfway between Swarga and the earth, between the Indra Loka, just hanging there. And Vishwamitra was uh, very angry that uh, Indra was refusing to accept the person he had sent. So then, since he couldn't, but Indra is also not uh, an unpowerful person. So then finally, Vishwamitra, he created an entire duplicate uh, heavenly planets. He said, all right, you won't go in that, then I'll make my own. So with his mystic power, he created an entire heavenly planets and gave those to Harishchandra. So then that confused Indra, that to have simultaneously, just like even in Switzerland, I'm sure if you had two burns, two Zuriks, it would confuse everyone. The old Zurich would become envious of the new one. You see, something like that, but probably even more confusing when you're talking about the whole planets. So, Indra's whole position was becoming a little bit uh, dubious. So then to end the uh, confusion of having the whole duplicate planetary systems, he agreed, he made an agreement with uh, Vishwamitra, all right, we'll take Haris Chandra into the Indra Loka, you please cancel out these duplicate planets. But in the meantime, Vishwamitra lost all of his... Because by tapasya, he had gained so much power, he's completely expended. After all that, because it wasn't in a pure devotional service, so when you're doing devotional service, the more you give to Krishna, the Krishna again supplies more and more energy. But this Vishwamitra was doing not in devotional service. So his energy was depleted, he was finished. Again he had to do tapasya to build up his strength. So somewhere in one of those many, you see, episodes like this, as he's moving up in the levels of rishihood. So Indra, at one point, said, we have to take care of this uh, person. So he sent one of his uh, society girls, is it Maneka, to see if she could uh, distract him. And even though he was uh, so much absorbed in uh, meditation, when he heard her ankle bells, it broke through his meditation, his austerities. And as a result, Sakuntala was uh, born. So, he said that even the mind is, uh, you see, very advanced with austerities and everything. If it's not fixed in uh, Krishna consciousness, it can always be drawn away. Sometimes if somebody is coming up too fast, the demigods get afraid that maybe this uh, person will want to take over our position. They may also obstruct. Or test. The same way there was an uh, attempt to test uh, Haridash Thakur, but because he was completely fixed in Krishna consciousness, he couldn't be distracted. Even so much so that Maya Devi herself came to try to uh, distract Haridash Thakur. Even Lord Shiva has uh, a difficult time in some ways. Anyway, of course, he's transcendental position. But it's difficult. Of course, nobody can resist except possibly Lord Shiva. The attractions of uh, Maya Devi. And, but uh, because of his complete absorption in Krishna consciousness, Haridas Thakur's uh, mind remained fixed. Didn't leave the lotus feet of Krishna. Didn't go to any of the senses. 
So by being fixed in Krishna, not taking shelter of any senses, only Maya can attract through the senses. When Haridas Thakur's total intelligence was fixed in Krishna's service, he wasn't at all taking shelter in any of the senses. So Maya Devi didn't have a hold. Rather, she also confided in him and she took initiation from him into chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Of course, we read in Bhagavatam that even great sages, you can't underestimate the power of of these great sages, they're able to, through their austerities, they're able to do such wonderful things that, uh, but sometimes because uh, they're not 10% fixed in serving Krishna, they have some separate motive. It may be a good motive or it may be to elevate themselves, but the intention is not to give Krishna satisfaction. So as a result, there's also some karma, there's some reactions and some instability there. So we find in Bhagavatam, even Vishistamuni and Vishamitra, one time they got to cursing each other and they turned each other to ducks and birds or something like that. They, so they were such great sages that uh, they became angry and lost their equilibrium and thus they began cursing each other. So here they became ducks and things. So apparently before that Vishamitra one time he tried to curse Vishishta Muni but that curse was caught by Vishishta Muni and his danda couldn't affect because he said that you're not a Brahma Rishi, you're a Maharishi. Don't have the power over me. So then Vishnamitra, he again did a tapa, he went to Lord Brahma or something and he said, How can I become a Brahma Rishi? He had to do intense tapasyas and things. And finally, Lord Brahma came and said, He said, I want to be a Brahma Rishi. So he gave him the blessing, he could become a Brahma Rishi. Then he came to Vishistha and said, Now I am also a Brahma Rishi. And Vishistha said, Yes. Congratulations. Now you are a Brahma Rishi. But don't think that that is the ultimate. There's something higher. Vishnu is something higher. Because all along he'd been thinking that that was the highest. If I can become a Brahma Rishi, then I'll have made it. That's the topmost position. He says, what is higher? You know, he's almost felt cheated. After so many years of tapasya and work, I mean, not years, but you see, yugas, my hour calculation. And the Shistamuni said, No, the Narayana Purayanas, the pure devotees of Krishna, they are far above even the Brahma Rishis. So, even a mental son of Brahma, like Durvasa Muni, he was defeated uh, by Ambarish Maharaj. So even Ambarish Maharaj, he was uh, attacked, but his mind was steady because he was fixed in Krishna consciousness. The Krishna consciousness is so sublime that even though one doesn't have this, that's not necessarily that one has all this uh, superficial tapasyas, and things, but by complete dedication at the lotus feet of Krishna, by complete surrender and service, one becomes fixed. And one is under the complete shelter of Krishna. And Krishna is Yogeshwara. He is the master of all mystic uh, powers. In our Sampradaya, you see, therefore we are not uh, concentrating on these mystic powers. Some Yogis teach their disciples that they should meditate so they can levitate. And they come up a few inches and then bounce down and they think that this is a great achievement. But uh, 
this uh, Prabhupada gave the example that uh, once there was a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he had two, I believe, one or two German disciples. And he mentioned that uh, what inspired that he was, uh, that scholar was studying Sanskrit and what inspired him about Krishna's uh, devotional service, I don't know if there is any trace of them, does anyone ever research whatever happened to those? You did? Yeah, big one. Srila Prabhupada mentioned that uh, he said that uh, whatever the eightfold mystic uh, system is, they want to get uh, smaller than the smallest greater than the great, bigger than the biggest, levity, all these things. This already the modern scientists, they have the same objective. Through their microscopes, they're trying to get smaller. Through their telescopes and rockets, they want to go farther, get bigger. Through their jet planes, they're able to travel. The objectives are the same. So these mystic powers are also material. It's not that they're spiritual. Actually, to develop Krishna consciousness, that is pure spiritual desire. So in our disciplic succession, this mystic powers and such things are always considered on a, you see, a subordinate level, not uh, really important. One example, one time in uh, Ramuna, Ramuna, you know that uh, when Lord Rama was coming back from Sri Lanka after having rescued Sita in the Pushpa Biman, they came over Orissa on their way to Ayodhya. And there was one very beautiful place. Sita said, let's stop there. It was all coconut trees and mangoes and very luscious and beautiful. So they just stopped there. And uh, in the discussion, they were having a discussion and Ram was telling about his future avatar where he would appear as a cowherd boy and uh, be playing a flute. So Sita wanted to know what that avatar would look like. So they stopped at that place and there with his arrow, Lord Ram carved a deity of Krishna in a stone with the arrow from his uh, and to show Sita Devi. That deity is uh, being worshipped in Ramuna as Gopinath. It is the Chir Kir Chir Kir Chur Gopina deity, the deity that stole the condensed milk for Madhavendra Puri. So the seva or the worship of that deity came to uh, the student of the six Goswamis, an associate of Narottam Das Thakur, Shamananda Pandit. So his chief disciple was uh, Rasika Ananda Das. And uh, one time some yogi, he apparently came to Ramuna and all the villagers, the pujaris there tell this story, that uh, there's a samadhi there to the stick of the neem, twig that Rasikananda brushed his teeth with. So why have they put that into a samadhi? So they explained that one day all the villagers came running to Rasikananda that come, come immediately, there's a yogi who is flying to the village on a stick on a branch. Well, Rasikananda was brushing his early in the morning, he's brushing his... You know, in India, they take a twig. It's called neem. The Lord Chaitanya appeared under neem. So the same neem, they take a small 
section of the branch and you chew on it. And then it, because it's a soft branch, it becomes like a brush. In fact, even the modern medical dental surgery, they say the best motion for brushing the teeth is a vibrationary circular motion. So when you brush on with a twig, the only motion you can do is this vibrationary circular motion. But anyway, that's another point. Everything that Vedic has got its perfections. These, uh, anyway, so he was brushing with a twig, just in case you might, it might seem very primitive, but uh, the neem branch itself contains all kinds of juices which are very good for the, not only for the teeth and the gums and everything, but they're good overall for the airs in the body. <clears throat> There's a story about a man who walked to some place and on the way he kept using this babul, another type of tree they used to brush his teeth. By the time he reached that place, he got leprosy. Because although that's very good for your teeth, it's very bad for the airs in the body. Then he was told on the way back, you just brush your teeth with neem. And by the time he reached back home, he was cured of the leprosy because the neem is very good for the airs in the body. Anyway, so he was brushing his teeth with a twig, not to get off the point. Not very interested. And they kept pressing him, though, no, no, you should come and see this yogi. He's flying. He's flying. Just, you know, villagers, they're very simple. In our Padayatra, in the, the Suhotra Maharaj was saying, I think that the most simple people in the entire world are these villagers. Very simple people. They're just very innocent, very simple. So when they see someone flying, you see, even when they see somebody walking, thousands of them come. <laughs> but to see somebody flying, you see. So they kept, oh no, you should see this. It's, he's flying. And Rasik and Andre said, this is not important. And he took his uh, twig from his mouth and put it under his leg. And he flew around the ashram four or five times. This is not important. Simply chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Landed back down and finished brushing his teeth. So they took that twig and they put it and made a little monument for it. So our acharyas, they don't stress these things because Krishna is the master of all mystic powers. So if you're carrying out Krishna's work, well, he can, his will will be done. Because these things also, they can become very distracting for the mind. So the devotees, they avoid. So in our devotional service, of course, previously, to engage in this type of devotional service was especially organized by the brahmanas and by the twice-born people, the kshatriyas and the vaishyas, type of people who are born outside of Vedic culture, normally would be really far from this kind of spiritual concept of life. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so kind that he has given this uh, special uh, benediction that anybody, they can take to Krishna consciousness. I mean, they can get this mercy no matter what their previous qualification or disqualification may be. But normally it might be difficult to fix the mind on Krishna, but by this process of chanting, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. It is uh, an engaging in the Sankirtan movement. It's uh, quite easy to fix the mind on Krishna. Still, some effort has to be made on our part. We should try and depend on Krishna, and He'll also give us the intelligence. Teshang Shatada Juktanam Bhajatang Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogang Tang Yanumamu Vayanti Te. And of course, we should follow the intelligence given by the bona fide spiritual master. Here just like Sri Vishnupad, Hari Swamis, giving always such 
good intelligence for printing and distributing Śrīla Prabhupāda's transcendental literatures, involving everyone in this spiritual sacrifice, so pleasing to the Lord. Like this we follow the higher intelligence, avoiding that type of intelligence pulled by the material senses. Our material senses may always be pulling us how to enjoy the sense of touch, the taste, the hearing, the seeing, the mind, the smelling, but rather we engage how to do everything for Krishna's pleasure. In this way the mind becomes fixed, it becomes linked with uh, Krishna's lotus feet and therefore it doesn't become tossed about by these currents of uh, material desire. Srila so Prabhupada explained that as soon as we begin to desire something material, immediately we become in anxiety. So to avoid that anxiety, we should always desire to serve Krishna. This is essential. This is explained in this verse. If we're not connected with the Supreme, then we can't have a steady mind, can't have transcendental intelligence. No possibility of peace. If there's no peace, how can there be any happiness? So, it's a very important point. Tomorrow, we're observing Vamana, Dwadasi fast on Ekadasi. And I think you know about how Lord Chaitanya observed Ekadasi when he was two years old. This Ekadasi was always very dear to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, when he was just two years old, hardly speaking, one day, see, normally Lord Chaitanya, he would cry, and then when the ladies would go, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, then he'd stop crying. But this day, even no matter what they did, he wouldn't stop. So after about 10, 15, 20, maybe half hour, hour of chanting different, he wasn't, you see, for two years, right from that time he was just, he would always stop crying, but this time he wasn't stopping crying. So they called in Jagannath Mishra that please, your son is not stopping crying. It was a new phenomenon. So then Jagannath Mishra put little Chaitanya Nimai on his lap and said, What's the matter? Why are you crying? He really stopped crying. He said that Jagadish Pandit and Hridoy Pandit are having a big feast today offered to the Lord for a courtesy. And I want to have that prasad. <laughs> Jagannath Mr. himself he didn't know about any, he got no invitation. Because the, uh, and how did a two-year-old start know what Ekadasi, you know it takes a few years to know about Ekadasi. <laughs> they don't, you don't have children do Ekadasi normally. So they were, or they don't, even if they do, they don't, they just eat what you give them anyway. So he, they were astonished that, uh, I mean, of course, Jagadish Pandit was, uh, uh, Jagannath uh, Misra's uh, close friend. But he lived about two, kilo three kilometers away on the other side of the Jalangi, Saraswati River. And they hadn't informed of any. It was Ekadasi. But how did Lord Chaitanya, I mean little Nimai, how did he know about Ekadasi? They couldn't figure it out. Yeah, they hadn't taught him about Ekadasi at that point. And whether there was really a festival that day or if they didn't know anything. But he wasn't stopping crying. They went off to the house of Jagadish Pandit. So there, this was a once a year, maybe on the same day, I'm not sure, one of the days. Because for the Lord, He uh, doesn't have to observe a codice. We observe a codice. But we offer the Lord can take the grains. We make so much. So they were offering uh, some special offering 
for the Lord uh, on his harvest field, but they would be taking the next day. And then uh, they went there, and uh, sure, there they had prepared like about 108 preparations, all the little pots and in front of their this in front of their deity. Jagannath Mishra was astonished. How did he know? No, I didn't even know. But he, how did he get the information? So then he told Jagadish Pandit that uh, Mr. Vishwambhai, he might, he had this thing happen. And then even Jagadish Pandit, he said that, uh, I didn't tell anybody because nobody can take the feet. He said, that is just for the Lord. I tell everybody next day. <laughs> so he took it that uh, this, uh, nobody knew anything, but he knew, therefore, somehow the Lord is acting through him some kind of an orish or something. So he should take the, he can have the offering. And uh, they are very happy to give all the offerings to little Nimai. You all set up with those slides? Where? I'm going to show it in here. Too late? I mean, they didn't bring it in, so it wasn't on there. Anyway, so then Lord Chaitanya, he partook of that prasad, and both he and the Jagadish Pandit and Hridayi Pandit, they were very overwhelmed. You see, in this way, Lord Chaitanya, even from two years old, he was actually encouraging everyone should follow this Sathadis. He requested his mother when he went to ja Jagannath Puri that you, one of the few things he requested that you follow Sathadis. We heard at one time the pandas the, in Puri, they wanted to force Lord Chaitanya to take the grain on Sathadis. They said, Prashad, you have to take it. Prashad they can take tomorrow. You don't only have to take it now. So like there's some, so apparently, of course this is one of those things that the devotees and Puri say, but Lord Chaitanya bowed down to offer his respect to the prasad. He stayed in that position until the Sakadasi was over, then he got up and took the And this way, he was able to outsmart the Brahmana. Lord Chaitanya, he set up the thing. Unless you want me to just stop and wait while I get all the mechanics done. Or is it too going to set it up? So, the special purpose of Akadasi is that we should uh, increase our glorification of Govinda. That we uh, don't take grains on Akadasi. That's especially to help us to remember the Lotus Seed of Krishna. And that's why we also try to increase our chanting. Or of course, if we're doing important service, then we go on. But that day is especially for making a little special effort to be a little more conscious about Krishna. One time somebody asked Srila Prabhupada that Maybe it was me, I think. <laughs> About some of these special days like Ekadasi and Kartik month that you get, you know, so many bonuses you get. Thousand times the hundred times or something like that, the effort during Kartik month by doing things as if you were doing another time. Similarly, Ekadasi, you get bonus points. So, Srila Prabhupada, in fact, there's stories about how even a husband and wife, they were having a big argument over something and yelling and throwing things, just, you know, full out fight. Even in the Vedic times, I guess sometimes these things did happen. And as a result, they were just so absorbed in fighting and whatever, arguing with each other over some point that they fight it through the whole day and through they fought through the whole day and through the whole night. And their fight, their, their argument didn't cease until the next day. They didn't eat, they didn't stop for anything. So because that day they had observed, Ekadasi happened that that particular day was Ekadasi. They didn't eat the entire day. Both of them got liberated, got uh, what, heavenly planets or something like that, just for because they were just fasting, even though they were fighting with each other. So somehow each one of those ekadasis, it says, has some name. It always says uh, some moksha da ekadasi. 
something happened on that Ekadasi, like that, that Ekadasi where husband and wife, they just, they were having an argument and then they forgot to eat that day because they were so angry at each other that they got uh, elevated because it happened that that day was Ekadasi. What to speak if somebody is doing it to please Krishna? What was there was something more? Oh, so then Prabhupada wrote me. So he wrote me that these uh, these special days. So they're like in the shops, in the stores. Sometimes they have special clearance sale, discount sale. So this is to attract new customers. He says the regular customers they're already coming. That the regular customers. They don't, whether they have, the certain clientele is there for the shop. So, but to attract the new customers on some holiday, they offer some discounts. So Srila Prabhupada said that you're already, those who are fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, they're already getting the, the seed. Unlimited mercy. But for those who are in the material consciousness, so just to attract them by saying, all right, on this day you get some special bonus to get the new customers. So these facilities are offered. <laughs> but for the devotees there anyway, 24 hours, 365 days a year engaged, so that's not a problem. They're a regular customer. <laughs> so that's, I've been using this with some of our folk members, I tell the, those who are just like beginners, I tell them that all right, you should, because in the month of Kartik it says you don't take any Amish. So because we don't take meat anyway. Amish means meat, fish, eggs. So we don't do that anyway. We're only taking pure vegetarian, Krishna Prashan rather. So we don't take, as almost like a token, we don't take Urad Dao. So I tell them you observe vegetarian for that period of time, hoping that this will then, if they can do it for a month, then that gives them some experience. Just like you're supposed to fast on Ekadasi, you have to have a feast on Dwarasi. So in Krishna consciousness, fasting and feasting, whenever there's a fast, it's always followed by a feast. Or for the devotee, fasting or feasting, it's the same, it's all for Krishna. This is which, the Pariyatra. This is the Krishna Conscious Olympics. Immediate playback by satellite. This is only three days ago. September 2nd. Of the this is in uh, <coughs> Dwaraka for the inauguration of our Iskan Padayatra to prepare for the celebration of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's 500th appearance anniversary. Dwarka, of course, was in the sea, so the original Dwarka is disappeared after Krishna's left. But uh, this is a very old temple which was constructed on the coast near the original place of Krishna's city, and everyone there is very devoted to Krishna. Take it easy. How come it just keeps moving? I got it in my hand, not for sure. Yeah, it's better anyway. See, on the top, there's a flag there that's 16 meters long. And that flag was uh, put up. It's a big flag hosting ceremony. And that was put up by uh, ISKCON. So some of the, somehow some of the photos were double exposed. But this is uh, the flag. We carried it and circumambulated the temple a few times, and then the flag was touched the lotus feet of the Dwarkadish deity. They didn't allow any photo to be taken. We took the blessings of Srila Prabhupada in his name and honored, then we, they hoisted that flag to the top of the temple. There were about 150 devotees that had assembled from all over the uh, world to this uh, Ashtarada came from uh, Germany to perform the uh, fire sacrifice. Sotra Maharaj and uh, two other German devotees are going for 21 days. So after taking the blessings of Dwarkadish, Lokanath Swami is right behind me with, he's the commander-in-chief of the 
walking part of the Padayatra. Right now it's going to Gujarat, Yasumati Nandan is the regional secretary. So the first aspect is uh, that uh, we're installing the Nitai Goya deities. So after bathing them with oil, as with a ghee, then uh, they're having a preliminary bath with salt water from the ocean. This is right on the ocean side. So then after requesting the Lord to come into the... Uh, or rather to manifest himself <coughs> as the arch avatar, then uh, we showed, we untie the eyes of the deity. We didn't have an Iskan Tulsi nearby, so we had to borrow one from the local temple as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the first uh, vision that Lord has is the Tulsi. Then uh, <laughs> I think only Iskan has developed the science of Tulsi worship to that extent. As an actual whole books and everything on it. But then after showing the Tulasi, we showed the Bhagavatam, we showed the Madranga drum and the Karatas to the Lord, and then they brought the cow and the calf, and uh, the Lord had a darshan of the cow and the calf, and Srila Prabhupada. Here's where the Lord is being shown the Madranga. His this is the eternal paraphernalia, the astra, or weapon of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So for his pleasure, the first things that he sees are important. So Then after seeing those uh, selected articles and persons, then we began the bathing ceremony. This is Paul Vishnu Swami, assistant GBC for South uh, East Asia countries. I believe this is Gopal Krishna Goswami, Srila Bhagavad Pad, Acharya for Canada and uh, Bombay, yeah, Western India, Gujarat. I think that this uh, is backwards. The very uh, beautiful deities made in the uh, town where Srinivas Acharya had his uh, ashram these deities uh, from Bankura. So we had over 108 uh, uh, pots, clay pots of different uh, substances which uh, the deity was uh, bathed in, the deities were bathed in. The purpose of the Padayatra, of course, this is a very special. The Lord Chaitanya is appearing just to be worshipped all over uh, India, possibly all over the world that uh, Lord Chaitanya came before as a sannyasi, but this time he was coming through and uh, we're taking him on the reverse route of his tour. But instead of coming as a sannyasi, he is coming as the Supreme Personality of Godhead with his uh, eternal associate, Lord Nityananda, Avadut. When the people saw the deity, I mean, you can just see they're overwhelmed the devotion, they just were speechless. And, and in fact, the people were, it's just, like, it's just like Lord Chaitanya's mercy was so incredible that anyone who saw the deity later in procession, immediately they would start to chant. They became just stunned to see the uh, pastime of Lord Chaitanya appearing, this whole Padayatra. I mean, you can actually see from the faces of the people, I mean, they're completely uh, absorbed. So, and the devotees, they also tried to further engage the, the people. This is Nava Yogendra Swami, right? Of, uh, he's the president of Vrindavan. He's uh, <coughs> getting everyone chanting. And Here's one of the brahmanas of the temple, he got inspired, so he started also to dance. Is your focus on this too? Yeah, it seems to be. Some devotees came from Nigeria, different devotees from around the world. <coughs> there we simultaneously had a fire sacrifice going on in a big kirtan. We wanted Lord Chaitanya to appear in the midst of a fiery kirtan. So it was a kind of a unique in contrast with our more completely Vedic uh, 
ceremonies, I mean, where we do the more ready. Here we had the Vedic aspect going on, but uh, we wanted to keep the kirtan in the forefront because this was the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Just as Lord Chaitanya appeared on the full moon day, everyone was chanting. So I said that I won't uh, call the Lord unless everyone is singing and dancing. So we had about a few hundred people all jumping up and down and dancing. Nitai go Hari Hari Om. Of course, there was over 108 preparations offered. Here's the arti of the Lord. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their lotus seat, and the small Utsav Murti. So now everything is getting ready for the uh, procession. Of course, this offering was also for Radharani. Appearance celebration was observed on that same day. The very day that Lord Chaitanya is appearing, that very day he is going to begin his 6,000 kilometer trek re-traversing the key points on his uh, six-year tour of uh, western, southern, and eastern India. The Lord's uh, compassion and beauty, it's uh, its just anyone who saw that came in the presence of those deities, they could uh, experience uh, some very uh, sublime mercy. I've been present at so many Ratha Yatras, but the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Nityananda was so intense that uh, you didn't have to ask the people to chant. They just spontaneously started to chant. There's some people just seeing, somehow they were just uh, brought to tears. I never saw anything like it before. So before leaving on our... Today, that first day, we had to walk eight kilometers. So before leaving, we respected a little prashanam. This picture, you just have to... Kala Krishna, put them in the, the left to right. We also, they distributed prashadam to the brahmanas. They invited 5,000 brahmanas. This is the few of them. But many of them came and they were really happy to accept the prashadam. Before, while they're getting everything ready outside, this is about four in the afternoon. We had a special uh, disc- uh, Dharma Sabha discourse on Lord Chaitanya. Different devotees from around the world were there speaking. Sotra Maharaj from Germany and uh, see Sridhar Maharaj from Canada and Bombay and myself, different people. A few short talks. But most of the people already gathered outside where the Deities were being taken to the uh, to their chariot, and uh, there were already thousands of people gathered outside. So, but we were <coughs> telling those who were interested something about Lord Chaitanya. Then, I was telling you about. <laughs> yeah, this is for the VSS. This is a picture of the photographer of VSS. Wow. Oh. From both sides. <laughs> we, together, Gopal Krishna Goswami and myself, we cut the uh, ribbon inaugurating the... See, we, you couldn't take a picture of the main deity of Dwarka Beach, but there are some sub-deities of the Lord. This is one of the others. It seems to be double exposed. So from that ancient town of Dwarka, here now the Lord is uh, on his uh, chariot which will be pulled by bullock carts and devotees. And literally thousands of people have gathered newspaper, uh, men, radio, television. Cameramen were also there. The Lord is taking their seat, or they'll be for some time to come. The head pujari of the Dwarkadish temple came out and garlanded Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. With all respect. Srila Prabhupada ki! Of course, Prabhupada had always expressed how he wanted to go on a Padayatra in India in 1977, and even earlier he had expressed he wanted to go to all of the villages. So now actually we're also taking Srila Prabhupada. And uh, on the Padayatra, he's leading up the procession and that's uh, hopefully we'll get his special mercy to fulfill his uh, desire of going on the visiting all the villages 
in front is Srila Prabhupada's uh, books so that uh, people have the opportunity to have Srila Prabhupada's darshan and the darshan of his books. Of course, apart from seeing the book's covers, they'll also be able to read and purchase the books, but that's a separate area. I think it's Gujarati, because they're going to Gujarat. I took the... Uh, I think this is, you know, backwards. I was fanning the deity in the entire way is backwards. These bulls, see how they're all very nicely decorated with bells and uh, colored threads. Big horns. Pretty big horns. <laughs> but they seem quite nice. The people were very, uh, very enthusiastic people. I mean, Dwarka, the atmosphere in Dwarka is like being in Vrindavan or Mayapur. It's a very special atmosphere there. It's not uh, an ordinary place. You can immediately feel that type of spiritual atmosphere. People had come from a long way to see this uh, historical <coughs> moment. People were very respectful, pe respectable and respectful both. Devotees, they kept up the kirtan going to go down this little hill in front of the Dwarkadish temple and then out the city. The first day we only went 8 kilometers. Normal, uh, normally they'll be going about 15 kilometers per day. The system is that the deity and the devotees will be going like this by foot, by procession. But uh, the rest of the camp, this uh, big pots and everything will be taken by the buses and trucks. There's a pandal or a big tent for giving programs. And so every morning, camp will be broken, packed up into the trucks, taken forward to the next place. Here's some of the nectar being prepared. Very opulent prasadam in the traditional way. Some of the local villagers, they're also very attracted. This actually, you don't have any pictures of the actual procession? Kala Krishna is here? No, but on the highway, you took picture on the road, is it, with the elephant and everything? Huh? Just in front of the temple. You went on, that's in front of the temple. Huh? To go through the... This is... Uh, there's some displays there. But Lord Chaitanya's transcendental pastimes and worldwide... And this kind of activity display is supposed to be being sent from Los Angeles. We're still waiting for it to come. Expect it any day. The devotees... The village leaders, they all came. They're very inspired to see Lord Chaitanya's uh, programs. And every village they're going, they're establishing a Namhat branch. People, they didn't know so much about Lord Chaitanya before, but we can see that this is attracting so much interest. In the... This is uh, the tent where they had the evening program. Every night there's a program. Then they're just taking now their breakfast and then they're going to be walking off to the next village, which is 15 kilometers away. They go anywhere between 12 to 20 kilometers in a day. So normally they leave early in the morning with cool. It's a big job picking everything up though because they have literally hundreds of boxes of generators and PA systems. Here's the elephant, but the elephant is actually they have very nice decoration for the elephant. I don't know why. We took many pictures of that. I don't know why. You didn't find any. Let's look upstairs. No, this is a special elephant procured simply. Uh, actually, Vishnupad donated about, what, what was it, five? At least 5,000 and maybe more dollars. Yeah. Uh, so... Part of the budget was to have this elephant. So elephants, even in the village, I tell you, everyone, 
even in India, they very they like to see the elephant. So we have a nice uh, decoration for the elephant. In fact, looking at Swami requested everyone not to go the first night. But they don't have. They they actually they have all kind of living tents and everything, but they didn't have time to set it all up. So most of the devotees were leaving. As they were leaving, the elephant just pushed against the bus. And by pushing against the bus, just like nothing, the whole side window of the bus smashed in. Glass was thrown all over Sridhar Swami. And uh, so I decided that I wasn't going out of the camp. I immediately left the bus and just slept overnight with the... Uh, with the devotees and the deity. <laughs> Took it as a sign. <laughs> Elephant, without any effort, it just kind of leaned over on the bus. <laughs> the whole window smashed out. Pretty uh, powerful. Here we're having a little get-together to get all the synchronization of the Namhat, the uh, Padayatra, Meanwhile, of course, the Jagannath bus is also there, going to accompany the Padayatra to distribute books. So the local villagers were very happy to take darshan of Jagannath. The village people, when they saw that the devotees were thirsty, they carried water for the devotees. I was, uh, I brought my computer along. <laughs> so we, uh, we made, uh, we brought a little technology into the uh, Padayatra, so we made a printout of all the departments of the Padayatra, since we had some experience on these things. That's it? Could have ended with Prabhupada. So, so basically the Padayatra will be going for 18 months. Go from, that's the far, far, why did you take out that picture? It shows Dwarka as the place where the sun sets. Huh? You have a light table here? Or is it all shifted out? If you have one, we can go over it and make it. It'll be going along the western coast to the far southern tip of India and then going up the eastern coast back to Mayapur. So that's about 6,000 kilometers. It works out, takes about a year and a half. We're really hopeful that in some of the cities, literally hundreds of thousands of people will gather. Already people are just joining. They're just coming. Sometimes when the Padayatra got kind of a village. Two people said, I'm going to join this Padayatra and follow it for the next 18 months. The family members were embracing them. There was weeping, you know. There's a whole emotional, you see, event there going. They went off, started walking with the uh, people. Some people came from uh, one, two brothers and a sister, about uh, 40 years old, they came from Bombay said, we, we've come here to join the Padayatra. People are writing in piles of letters. We want to come and join the Padayatra. So expecting that as it goes on, we'll keep on picking out more and more people. And from one village, all the people of one village always walk to the next village. So there's like about a thousand people every day going with the uh, procession. It's very... I don't know where all the... I have to go through. There's many other very really nice pictures which were taken when we was leaving through the town of the people, they all follow it along. The procession was about a mile long, I mean, a kilometer long. Any questions? Each country has got its flag there. The flags haven't come from LA yet, but the flags are procured. Each country has a flag. This was one idea that the uh, press in India liked, it, that all the devotees, wherever we have a temple in any of country, the flag should be there somewhere. So showing it like Lord Chaitanya has so many followers around the world. Even in the Hong Kong newspaper, it published how that uh, Hare Krishna was uh, movement was observing the 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, taking him in procession. The founder of the Hare Krishna movement, Lord Chaitanya, was being worshipped by the President of India and all the big people, and he was being taken in procession around India. They gave very nice press. So. This is actually already having some international effect and as it goes on we hope that uh, it will reach more and more of the international eye because especially the people are interested because many people do this uh, Padayatra means to walk somewhere. They do this in India but very rarely. Never never has there been an international group, people from different countries coming. So that is attracting some uh, attention from the uh, public. 
Krishna media. Our purpose is to glorify Lord Chaitanya. There are many other aspects which uh, they they ha- in the cities they're putting up a three day pandal program, and then the padayatra will come and meet that uh, city program. And they have about 15 dioramas displays, which also accompany. And uh, then they have this uh, whole change, this uh, display from Los Angeles, uh, very nice uh, display on reincarnation and different uh, philosophical and temples of Iskand around the world. And then you've seen already they have the Lord Chaitanya's pastimes display. And every day at 4.30 in the afternoon, they'll be distributing prasadam to all of the village people. And of course, the devotee will be, will be taking prasad three times a day. It's a very purifying... I don't know exactly how to express it. It's really beyond expressing. But one gets a, a very intense feeling that uh, the whole uh, program is very much uh, being uh, dictated by Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, and uh, Srila Prabhupada. And one can feel their presence very intensely when uh, on this uh, particular program. It's something very sublime. And Lord Chaitanya, they're giving them mercy. The people suddenly they feel just feel very happy. You can just see people. Everyone just becomes very happy as soon as uh, they hear about or they see the uh, procession. It just be, something seems to like release that inner anandam from their heart. <laughs> 